Hello, my name is Dan Klemek with Siskin Company, and our safety meeting today is going to deal with ladder safety considerations. <clears throat> Most safety manuals are going to talk about things like correct ladder type for electrical work, which means you want a non-conductive ladder. Most safety manuals will deal with things like have non-skid feet. They'll deal with tying off the top of a ladder. They'll talk about extending a ladder three feet above a platform. They'll talk about having the ladder positioned at a four to one ratio. And they'll also mention that you probably never want to use a step ladder as a straight ladder. You'll also see things in most safety manuals that'll talk about observe the high standing limit, that you don't want to overload ladders, that you don't want to overreach a ladder, and that you do not coat wood or fiberglass ladders. Now that being said, those are in those safety manuals. The question is, do we do these things? Or do we just kind of use the ladder because it's there and we use it and we don't really think about it and we don't pay much attention to these rules because doggone it, we have a job that we need to do. The concern is that we can misuse ladders a lot before we have an accident. Trouble is we never know when we're gonna have that accident and anytime we fall, we never know if it's gonna be one of these things where we land and kind of laugh it off or we happen to land, crack our head, and die from it. So we need to take all the ladder stuff seriously. And I want to just point out a couple things about ladders. There's OSHA safety rules that talk about stairs and ladders. It addresses construction. It addresses um, uh, you know, the, the, the weight, the characteristics, inspection before use. It addresses training of all the things that you need to know before you use a ladder. Most of us use ladders all the time. We never think about these things but we really need to understand that OSHA has a lot of information about ladders. We have our safety managers that have a lot of information about ladders. We need to follow these, these kind of rules. Whenever ladders are purchased, we need to look at the weight rating of the ladder. And we frequently don't think about it. If we take a look at this slide that you'll see, there's a number of different types of ladders. Each ladder has a weight rating. And that's the weight of you climbing up on it, plus if you have a tool belt or you're carrying something on your back or around your waist, what's the weight of that as well? If you exceed the weight rating of this ladder, the ladder is likely to fail. So pay attention to the weight rating of the ladders and buy the ladders that are appropriate for the kind of job that you're doing. When you look at ladder inspections, you want to look for things like loose or damaged rung steps, if there's supports or other type of braces, are they all tight and in good shape? You want to check for the hinges and the other hardware. Are they damaged? Is there anything obviously wrong with it? Now, one of the things about it is you probably can't make repairs to the ladder. It either needs to be sent back to the manufacturer or the ladder needs to be destroyed. If you're using a step ladder, you need to make sure that the spreader is is fully extended and the ladder is is firmly spread out before you actually start to climb it. You want to make sure that the ladder feet are set firmly, that they're on good firm solid ground, and again, if there's any kind of a defect in the ladder, that the that the ladder be taken out of service, a repair made or the ladder destroyed. When it comes to training, we need to train people in how to use a ladder. It's, it's kind of simple. We probably think we all need, uh, we all know how to do this, but how do you position the ladder? When you climb it, what are those considerations? That's the stuff that we're talking about. When you're setting up a straight ladder, a well, ladder needs to be set on a level surface. It needs to have a good firm base and it needs to be level because as you're extending it up, you want to make sure that the ladder is going to stay where it is. You want to have it clean around the base and uncluttered so you have room to work to make sure it's a good solid, a good solid base. The ladder needs to be placed at a four to one ratio. For every four feet up, it needs to be one feet out, for, one foot out from the surface. So if you have a 16 foot ladder, Basically, a 16-foot ladder up the wall should be the base of it should be four feet out from the wall. Most of the newer ladders have little decals and, and other things on them that kind of show, you know, line up this line with the with the ground, line up this line with the wall. There you have it. But pay attention to that four to one ratio. When you when you're climbing onto a platform, the top of a fixed ladder should extend three feet above the platform. Maybe you're getting on a roof. 
The, the side rail should be three feet above the edge of that roof. You always want to secure a ladder. It's a very good practice to do that. It, it holds it. it, it if the wind comes up or something else, it, it keeps it, you know, there. And so always secure the ladder at the top, um, you know, if, if you have any opportunity to do that at all. You never want to lean a ladder against an unstable surface. So you want to make sure that whatever the ladder is positioned against will hold the weight of the ladder, that you can climb it, that it's not going to slip, slide, or fall, or whatever. You want to try to avoid any kind of a traffic area. Barricade it, close it off, close doors, or do whatever you have to so that somebody's not going to walk into or drive into the ladder that you're on. You want to make sure that that's protected because you're up there, you don't want to fall. You always want to make sure that you check the rungs and the bottoms of your feet for any kind of slippery surfaces or mud that might, it, that, that might be part of the, the work environment. Because if your feet are slick, if the ladder rungs are slick, it's just harder to stay on it. So make sure that your feet are free of mud, other kind of slippery surf, uh, substances. You always want to face the ladder and use both hands and both feet when you climb. There's a concept called three points of contact where anytime you're climbing a ladder, it's two hands, one foot, or two feet and one hand as you start to climb up at any time you're working from it. If you're going to be bringing tools up and down a ladder, they need to be either on a, on a tool belt that's fastened to you, or after you climb the ladder, you hoist them up in a bucket or something else. The idea is you keep your hands clean, clear, your feet clean, and use three points of contact as you climb. When you're working on a ladder, keep in mind that three points of contact. So you're going to stand on it, you're going to work, you don't want to overreach too far. The idea is to always keep your midline or your belt buckle within the rails of the ladder. You never want to climb higher than the second step on a step ladder or the third step on a fixed ladder. So you don't ever climb to the very top. You always stop before that, and most of the newer ladders will have a decal on them that says, do not climb any higher than this. The reason is, is to maintain stability so you don't fall off. And you never want to walk a ladder or pull the ladder and jerk it and slide it over when you're against the surface. No matter how comfortable you are on a ladder, remember, don't overreach and don't jerk it or try to walk the ladder. So to summarize, you want to purchase the correct ladders. What is the weight of the people that are going to be on it, including their tools, and buy a ladder heavy enough and substantial enough to let you do the job and keep within the rating of the ladder? You want to take care of your ladders. You want to store them correctly. You want to inspect them. You basically want to treat them as a tool that is subject to being damaged and understand that any damage to the ladder reduces the safety of that ladder. You always want to inspect it before use. Take that personal responsibility to make sure it's correct to use and that there's no defects that are going to cause an injury for you. You always want to follow those rules that we talked about, about the angle, the, the solid base, the, the positioning, how the, the spreaders are, are set up on a stepladder, and make sure that everything is set up correctly. And you always want to use good footing, make sure your feet are clean, the ladder rung is clean, as you're climbing up or before you start climbing up, just so you don't have any slip or fall from that kind of a slippery surface from your feet or from the ladder. This presentation is available at www.gomsea.org.